Hey, my resilient fam. It is Life Unscripted with Daphne. So I am back. Um, it is Sunday. It is actually the Sunday after the um, holidays, the Independence holiday. So I am just um, doing some housekeeping. I, of course, if you watch my prior video, I do not have water. <laughs> so I am... Um, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it's, um, I have like probably 20 gallons of, uh, just manual water. So I'm totally old schooling it. Um, at any rate, I decided uh, today I am going to talk about my weight loss journey. Um, and this is not something I talk about too often because it, it really was a long time ago and I have redefined my relationship with food. Um, so, and sorry if I keep on readjusting, I am full disclaimer. I have such issues with editing <laughs> that now I'm using a, a different tool to edit, to see if it's easier for me to edit this way. Um, so we'll see. So hopefully as I'm talking through this video, I'll be able to insert my before pictures. I should be able to ins insert my before pictures. So you'll see what I used to look like at my heaviest. Um, I'll be 51 in two weeks. I, I miscalculated. This is how fast July is already going. Um, so I'll be um, actually two, ooh, wow, two weeks from today, I'll be turning 51. Um, when I was in my 20s, my biggest, I peaked at 396. So on September 12th, 2000, I had gastric bypass surgery in Atlanta, actually is at Atlanta Medical Center. Um, and I was 20, I was 26 at the time. And it was one of those decisions that I decided to do it. And it's funny how things fall into place when you make a decision and you don't have any resources to, um, to, to 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 hold that decision like at the time that I made the decision I literally had come home from um, a job interview I could not get a job I had just graduated um, I just received my MBA so uh, this is like summer of 2000 just received my MBA and because um, I received my MBA in June of of well. This is a year later, but I got my MBA in 99, but could not get a job for like a year. It's one of those things where I got my MBA maybe two or three years after I got my undergrad. This is in the 90s. And it's one of those things you have to show that you have experience, but do you have uh, your graduate degree and so forth? And then at the time, <clears throat> I was 396 pounds. So clearly I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with you know, just I'm dealing with obesity discrimination because I was, and I and I'll show I'll show the pictures. Um, and I was I was young. I was 26. Here's one of them. I don't know if you can see. I, I literally have one in the thing, but this is me. This is me at age 22. So in this picture, I'm three. I, I wrote on the back, and I'm 22 and I'm 350 pounds. So this is me on a cruise. Um at age 22. So I don't know if you could see it really good, but that is me, 22. So this is more than 25 years ago. Keep in mind, I am now about to be 51 in two weeks. Oh, oh here's another one. So this is probably a better picture. So this is me, um, probably closer to that 396. So that you can tell this is, oh, this is a Polaroid, shake it, shake it. Shake it like a play, anyone who's an outcast man like me. Uh, but this is me. Let me tell you something. When I was that size, you couldn't tell me anything about myself. I was Lizzo before Lizzo was Lizzo. Let me tell you something. I was Mae West with my weight. I loved every curve. I loved it. I would throw my bosoms in people's face. Like I used my size for control, for attention, um, because I couldn't get it any other way. So this is 
um, another before picture of me. So I have two before pictures of me that you can see. Um, so I'm glad I, I didn't realize I had these laying around. So the, the, this, this is me. This is me. Um, well, I'm young. And this is another test. Shout out to Gen Xers. We always look so old when we were young. I'm in my 20s in these pictures, and I'm 51 now. And and I, I've been looking at the same face for the last 20-something years. My, my face, anyway. So I remember the day I came home, and this was in the summer. Um, and this was before my birthday. I do remember this. And I came home from, from a, an interview. The interview just did not go well. I have water today, y'all. So the interview did not go well. And um, at the time, I lived in Stone Mountain. I bought a house in Stone Mountain. And I, and I was married. I was married to my first husband. And my first husband was very abusive. Um, and that would be another video for another day of how to actually me getting the surgery was how I was able to escape the abusive relationship. I have a, um, I call him my play brother, but I love him dearly. Um, he lives in LA. I call him Drakey. And, um, well, let me, let me start with the story and I'll circle back to the advice he gave me. Um, but at the time I came back home from the, the interview, I knew the interview had gone horribly and I came home and I was ready to get into a good pity party. Have you ever just, you know, you, you're about to just cry your tears out. I mean, you got your napkins, you've got like the Hagen dazs you've got, like, it's just, it's, it's just, you just going in, poor me, woe is me, it, this is it, you just about, it's just you, yourself and you, and you're about to go in because the world is just crashing at your feet, and that's just, in this moment, you are about to throw this pity party with all of the accouchements, Accouch I said that wrong, anyway, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's like that, that's it. So before I could do that and I was just ready to, I had the TV on and it said, gastric bypass doesn't work. Watch our news footage at six. They were going to interview this doctor who was doing it. And mind you, this is 2000, 200. So this is right after Y2K. This is, so we're in, you know, embracing the new millennium. So this is a long time ago. This is 24 years ago. So before I started my pity party, I said, oh, well, let me listen to this. Mind you, I have no job, have no health insurance. I did not have $10 in the bank. My mortgage is, look, I, I, don't, I don't have, I didn't have anything. So I watched the news story later that night, 6, 11, whatever time it came on. And I heard everything that he had to say. And by that time, I had tried everything. This is shortly after the, and, and I know some of you may remember this, some of you may not, the thin, thin craze. A lot of people lost a lot of weight on that. Didn't work for me. And then a lot of people end up suing the thin forming side of thin. Um, because it caused all these vicious side effects. Um, but very long story short, I even tried FinFin and FinFin did not work for me. And that was, I want to say late 90s. So let's say 97, 98. That did not work for me. I had done uh, Metafast. I had done Optifast. I mean, I had done these really drastic diets. And I was going to the gym. I was going to Bali. So this is not a case of um, you're about to watch the beginning of 600 pound life and I'm stuck to the bed and I'm ordering 12 pizzas and, you know, six gallons of orange soda or whatever. No, I was doing everything in my power to lose the weight and the weight would not come off. When I say not come off, this is, I was doing low carb. Oh my God. Vegan. I became a vegan for a year, gained 30 pounds. Um, and I watched 
the video and I watched the doctor talking who fast forward did become my doctor. Um, and I said, I- I've got to have the surgery. And here's the thing about gastric bypass. And I'll tell anyone this. Um, and it's, it's interesting now. And, and I unfortunately have had some really good friends pass away from gastric bypass. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get upset, but, and they did not tell me they were having it. Um, I, I really wish people would embrace or, or research gastric bypass a little bit more because these days they do it differently. Back in my days, they cut you and they removed, it's like going in and removing organs. Like, oh, she doesn't need the spleen. She doesn't need the gallbladder. Like, um, and they didn't have therapy for you back then. So right before... Our, we, we were encouraged to have a last meal, a last goodbye. Mine was, I will never forget this, child. Yes. Cheesecake factory, chicken piccata. So to this day, and it is 25, almost 25 years later, I cannot eat the chicken piccata at Cheesecake Factory. When I go to Cheesecake Factory, you know, every once in a while, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I just, it, but that was there, that was my last meal, and on that night, I think my gallbladder must have erupted because I was doubled over in pain. They ended up having to remove my gallbladder during the surgery, so I didn't have a gallbladder. But long story short, um, I selected him and went from. So I didn't have any money. I didn't have talk about wanting something so bad and manifesting it. This is what happened. I ended up getting a job that covered me for benefits day one. They ended up paying for the surgery. Um, they ended up giving me, graciously giving me leave, um, and that was it. And it was it was my mother, my aunt on my father's side who is still living, and actually, ironically, the only family member that I communicate with to this day. And um, it was the two of us, and and my mom drove to Atlanta Medical Center, and the two of them were were terrified because it, we're Haitian. And so if, if, you, if you know Haitians or if you are Haitians, you already know how the conversation is going in the car. You think I'm going to die on the table. It, it's a lot of drama. And, um, and I had already done the prep the night before. So I'm already over, you know, I'm, I'm in no mood to sit here and listen to all that. Um, my thought process was this is going to come out two ways. Either this is going to work and it's going to be the answer or this is not going to work and I'm going to die on the table. But those are my two options because I've exhausted everything else and and I was okay with that. That was the mindset I had, but I knew there was no plan B. I knew there was no, there was no second chance. There there was no easy way out. That's what, that's why I hate when people say, oh, you cheated. how are you cheating when you put your life on the damn line? You're not cheating. You are not cheating when you put your life on the line. Please miss me with that. So I end up having the surgery success. I lost 200 pounds the first year. And mind you, what to my credit, I was young. So I'm in my, I was 26, so I, I was young. I went to the gym every single day followed the rules every single day. I, I had my liquids the first two or three months, however they have the, whatever the regimen was, I didn't go beyond whatever the doctor told me to do. And then I ended up losing the last 30 pounds the following year. So 2001, oh, mama was fine. 2002, mama was real fine. Um, those pictures I need to find because I actually still have my pants that I wore to the day of my surgery. And I still have them there in uh, the closet downstairs. Um, here's the thing about gastric bypass. The whole time I was thinking, oh, when I lose the weight, I'll finally be happy. When I lose the weight, this will happen. When I lose the weight, that will happen. When I lose the weight, this will happen. That's not how any of this works because when I lost all the weight and all the stuff was still happening, it just puts a mirror to your face because then you realize it wasn't the weight all this time. It was you. And that's where you really need therapy. But here's the thing. When you have a food addiction, you trade one addiction for another. So at the time, 
I traded mine, I, I'll admit it, it was sex. I traded mine for sex. And then I slowly transitioned into alcohol. Um, and my alcohol use did not get crazy. It was so functional. Um, my father's side of the family, we very functional. My father's side, very functional um, alcoholics. It's, it's people who say alcoholism is not in your DNA. Yes, it damn is. Oh my God. Yes, it is. So I lost 230 pounds and then I had all of this skin. And I don't have a big frame, which I did not know at the time. Because when you're, when you're that heavy and you've been that heavy all your life, and I'll have to do another video of, of, of what led to that. And a lot of it had to do with my upbringing and so forth, um, because I'm the only one in my family who's overweight like this, the only one. Everyone else is, is pretty petite. So you can imagine the level of bullying, the, le the level of abuse I took. But going back, circling back to, I told you, I'll circle this airport. I'll eventually land the plane. Going back to my brother, my play brother, uh, who lived in LA, I call him Drakey. He said, before you have the surgery, you have to get rid of your husband. Otherwise, you will never recover the way you need to recover if he's there because he will hinder your recovery. Hands down. The best advice, if I can say the top five advice I've received in my life, that definitely was one of them. So when I knew I was approved for the surgery, I promptly just said, get out. And I've been trying to leave this man for a long time. That was what I needed to put. Because once I knew, okay, I'm having the surgery and nobody is going to stop me. I don't care. I don't care. Then you get out. So he was out of the picture. Um, and, and, and so that was, and so I had all this skin and then you have to go through the, the surgeries to remove the skin. They're painful. Um, insurance does not cover it at all. Like they had to weigh my breast and my breast, my, the skin came out to like three pounds and insurance would not cover it. I don't know what they do today. I'm talking about what happened back in the early 2000s. So very long story short, over the years, I've spent easily $100,000 on re removing skin. Like you can see my arms, you can see the scars. And he, he and always go to someone who is used to doing plastic surgery and not to your gastric bypass surgery who says he could do plastic surgery because that, that's the mistake I made. So he ended up botching my arms. So my arms, my arms are botched because of him. So I had to go to someone else who to this day, I still, the last time I had a, a, a complete, they call it mommy makeover, but I can't call it that because I'm not a, a mommy, but just a full, you know, a body done. Uh, it was 2019. And you, you pretty much have to do it every 10 years if you want to tune up everything. Um, yeah, I've been going to her, her, it, it's, it's a group, it's a practice group in Atlanta. If anyone wants to really know the name, you can send me a DM. I'll, I'll gladly get, send you a referral. I've, I've sent so many people there over the years and they all look amazing. So she does chef's kiss work. Um, so with that said, it, it, the, the, oh, all the surgeries to remove the skin, the first tummy tuck I've had, and I've had five or six tucks, um, to remove, I mean, it was, a, you have to remember 396 pounds. I now weigh 135. So, and, and I just got down to 135 in my 50s. So in my 40s, I was about 160 when, with the drinking. So when I stopped drinking, my weight really plummeted. Then when I started strength training, my weight really plummeted. Um, and that, so very long story short, because I, I, I don't want this video to get too out of hand. Um, I had to redefine my relationship with food. I did it in the incorrect way initially when it was trading one addiction for another. And, and you know, COVID really, whoo, 
in terms of alcohol really made the it was the gut punch in terms of putting my alcohol um on another level of consumption because once we were stuck because i always had a rule i never kept alcohol in the house so it was one of those i would have to get dressed up go in an uber go physically to a location and drink i only socially drink i never drank by myself so it, that's why i say it was so functional that there was never an issue it wasn't until COVID hit that everything just really just blew out of a portion and just 2019 was the best year of my life. 2020 was horrible. And then um, 2020, December 30th, 2021 was the day I stopped drinking. There's That's another story, I won't get into it. Um, but going back to the gastric bypass, um, what I did was I just, redefine my relationship with food. I stopped doing diets. I don't do low carb. I don't do, you know, I, I stopped doing that. I stopped, I stopped seeing food as a threat. I start cooking my own food. I reduce the times that I go out. Definitely don't, you have to learn how to cook in order to be healthy. I don't care what you cook. You can literally mimic what you buy in the fast food. It's still healthier if you make it at home versus you getting it from the fast food because they, they, you don't know what they're putting in your food. And they're still using cheap versions of oil to reduce their operating costs. I mean, if you look at it from a cash perspective, it, it, if, you're, if you're doing that three times a day, you're going to see elevated level, and you don't have a weight problem, you're going to see elevated levels of either your cholesterol, your blood pressure, something's going to be off in your body chemistry. So you have to see what you're putting in your body. So what I did was I just literally just started cooking for myself. I love to cook. I love food. Here's one thing. I'm greedy. Whew. If you ever watched the show Living Single, the character Max, that's me all day. I'm coming up. I'm always somewhere noshing on something, eating something. You'll see me on a call, just finished something, about to eat something. If I go to a networking event, where's the food? I'm cooking. Do we have to speak? I'm eating. I, I'm all about food. I'm a foodie. I'm a certified barbecue judge here in, in Georgia. I will do another video for that later. Um, I love that. Um, I'm actually a certified steak judge, certified pizza judge. So food is life to me. I love food. I, like, I'm still that greedy little girl who sits, who just, I love food. So I had to redefine my relationship with food. Um, my first priority is to get my nutrients in. So I always eat my protein first, always. Um, gastric bypass is so different now because I know they do it laparoscopic, laparoscopically. Um, back in my day, they cut. Um, you have to know your physician. You have to trust your physician. Um, I know a lot of physicians these days are in for the buck build that relationship, get referrals. Um, and I, I've kept the weight off now for, I've kept the weight off long enough so the government doesn't even want to follow me because the government wants, it's so bad to put statistics on gastric bypass and say it doesn't work or it doesn't work after a certain number of years. And I, like September 12, 2024 will mark 24 years since I've had my bypass. And I went from 396, I am now 135. I did not weigh, I have not weighed 135 since literally 13. And I'll, I'll be 51 in two weeks. So that lets you know this work. And I don't do anything extraordinary. Like I said, I love food. I don't do diets. I do a lot of intermittent fasting um, because it does regulate my appetite. You have to remember, I have Crohn's disease. So... I do regulate, um, so, so that does play a factor in what I eat. There's a lot of things that aren't too cool with crumbs, <laughs> so I stay away from it. Um, and another thing I do that I, I started doing in October of last year, I started strength training. Um, I, I built a gym in, in my house. Well, anywhere I go, I have my gym, but I had a gym, a personal gym back in 2007 best investment I ever made. I think it was like less than 10 grand, but it was the best investment I ever made. I think I paid maybe 300, 400 a year for maintenance. Ooh, excuse me. Um, 
and it's fantastic because I'm a germaphobe. I don't like working out near people. And um, at first I used to do 45 minutes of cardio every single day. And then around the time that after my, after my mom passed away, you know, I knew she had low bone density. I knew that's something that I probably would have to deal with. And then I got the idea, well, let me start strength training to counteract bone density. So I'm not even thinking about anything else, but let me get stronger. And so I started lifting weights. Y'all, the strength training changed my life. I have, and I'll do another video where I show you my, my, the gym that I have in my home. Um, that is, it was, it was a game changer because it reduced my workout time. Like I, I now on my, I, I strength train Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, and I do 30 minutes of cardio before my strength training sessions just to kind of warm up. Um, and then I just do cardio Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, if I'm having a flare, flare up, or if I'm just, my body will tell me when to rest. So if it's telling me to rest, then I will. I do not work out on the weekends. Like I, I have this, and I don't work out when I travel. I have a rule. If I'm on vacation, I don't bring anything with me. Like I'm there to enjoy my vacation. Um, but once I started strength training, that really, especially what I'm going through right now, because with what I'm going through right now, that's the only thing that I can do that has remained consistent. Because like I told you, my income is gone. Um, and sometimes I do go days without eating just because of the way everything kind of has landed. And when I, saw that, when I told you I'm in survival mode, it is survival mode. And you trade one addiction for another. So I stopped drinking two and a half years ago. You still have to, you need a coping mechanism healthy one. So mine was cardio for a minute, but I was doing too much of that. So with strength training is perfect because you can't over strength train. Your body physically won't allow you to. Well, well I'm not a bodybuilder, so my body will not physically allow me to over strength train. So that was perfect. So that's, that is my perfect outlet to get my, and I do it first thing in the morning. Like when I first wake up, I immediately work out, get it out. It, it's just, I get it, get it out of the way. So I do not have to think about it for the remainder of the day because I don't know how my days are going to go. And nine, I, like literally Friday when everything went to hell, I had just finished working out when I heard the noise, that gushing noise with the water and the plumbing and all that and everything had went to hell. So I had finished working out. So I got my workout. So with working out, the cool thing is your body burns calories. So you have to eat more, which is really cool. Um, and, and I can tell when my body needs calories because it, it just, you get this ravenous feeling. So between that and the intermittent fasting, it's, it, it's work. It transformed my body. Um, it, so I love the way I fit into my clothes. None of my clothes I used to have fit anymore. When I stopped drinking, I was 162 and I was already pretty curvy, lean, you know, nice and thick. Um, but this low, I, I really, and this is me not doing anything, anything, it's, you know, like I said, intermittent fasting, the strength, but I still eat anything I want. Um, I, I love eggs. So I eat, Ooh. Oh, I'll probably go through maybe a dozen, a dozen and two dozen eggs a week. I love eggs. Um, I, I make sure I get my protein, natural protein. I don't like protein shakes. Um, they irritate my stomach. I'm finding now that um, synthetic ingredients really irritate my stomach. And because I'm under so much stress right now, it's very easy for me to go into a flare up. Um, I can work out through a flare up. Um, but sometimes it's so debilitating. I'm in a fetal position for the rest of the day. So, uh, it's, it's a delicate balance and I, and I really have to be careful what I eat. So I make sure I cook everything. So I know what's going in it. And because of that, but I cook what I want. I mean, I cook what I, I like, so I'm not cooking things. Oh gosh, I got to eat this because now I'm in, no, I just, I, I cook 
And then when I go out, if I go to a function, I see what I like, then I'm going to eat it. Um, but I don't deprive myself of anything. Now, do I eat this? Thing? Like you, yesterday, you saw with the pineapple juice and I had my little ginger beer with it. My nine out five. Now, fruit juice does, and, I, and that's another thing. I weigh myself every single day. Some people hate that. I do it because it allows you to catch things from going crazy. And that's how I do that. I weigh myself every single day. You no, know, I've weighed myself every single day for the last 24 years. I don't care. I don't care. Because the train will just leave and go awry. If you don't know what's going on with your weight, if you wait a month, two months, three months, and before you know it, 35 pounds are packed on and you don't know where it came from. No, I play within a window of five pounds with my body. Five pounds, that's it, five. If my body goes beyond that window, okay, well, I know I got an intermittent fast and I know I got to do this for a day and a half or maybe a whole day, but that's it. And it's not, it's not stressful, but that, that, that works for me, but that's what I do. I weigh myself every single day. I don't do it every week. I don't do it every month. Every single day I get on the scale. Plus it lets me know based on what I did the day before. Okay. Well, I can't do that again today because you know, I'm Haitian. I love my rice and I make my rice. My jury jean jean. Yes. However, I can't eat that every day. And the scale will show it immediately the next day, the water retention. So I enjoy it when I can, but I just know it's not an everyday activity that I can indulge in every day, which is fine. You know, I tend to lean towards protein and veggies. Um, I tend to not like sweets and not like carbs. It's weird because I used to be so carb focused uh, and now I'm just not. Um, But at any rate, that is my journey. Just don't obsess over food. It makes it worse. And it's, it's a brain thing because I'll put it to you in this context. If you're on a diet and I walk you into a grocery store, you're going to be hungry. As opposed to you just ate something and then I walk into the grocery store and I said, okay, you can have anything you want in this grocery store, anything. Just here's the cart. Pick anything you want in this grocery store. Uh, I don't know what I want. I'm not in the mood for anything. It's psychological. I had to get to the root of why I was eating so much. And I didn't, which led to all the drinking. And it wasn't until I had the conversation with my mother and I realized, you know, again, may my mother rest in peace. I realized I, my childhood, I realized a lot of things where I had to realize they were what they were and my family is just who they are. And I just had to remove myself and stop poisoning myself, trying to think it was going to get attention on their end. And that's what I was doing. I was and not realizing I was doing, and I was doing that in relation to my mother and my father had, had, passed away when I was, um, unfortunately, he didn't get to see the weight loss. Um, That that's, I don't have too many regrets in life. Um, But I do regret that he did not get to see I guess he sees it now. (laughs) Um, And it's ironic, because I'm built just like him. Um, So when I strength train, I can, when in the mornings, I used to hang out with him when I was a little girl, and he would run marathons and weight lift and do all this stuff. And before he would do it, five o'clock in the morning, I would always be there talking to him. And that would be like our special little chat. And I remember that as a little girl. So the fact that I have that discipline and I do it today is definitely my father's spirit in me. Um, because I, I can't, it's like someone having a cup of coffee. I can't imagine not getting up and go and working out. And I, when I tell you, I have been sick, like, Fix it and we'll still work. It's just psychological that I will do that and then crawl back into the bed and continue being sick. I, I don't. It's, um, so, but that's 
life unscripted my resilient fam that that so that's how she came i came to be from these beautiful young women and they'll always be beautiful to me so that's that's that was basically it so i i basically took control of my own food my own destiny and my addictions, uh, you know, I like say so you do trade one for another. And once you realize that and and you put the work in to learn how to cope with identify what was the trauma initially that led you to eat in the first place, because it is not normal for a 25, 26 year old to be almost 400 pounds. That's not normal. Um, and mine was not medically induced so i'm not going to say i'm not going to put a blanket on that statement for me it was not normal because it was not i didn't i was not pre-diabetic i did not have any comorbid factors i was pretty healthy aside from the weight so and it, it's it's interesting now that once i did lose the weight it was one of the few, it was a horrible time in my life because I, I didn't know how to navigate the world in this lens, in this body, because I was so used to people not seeing me when I was that way, when I looked like this. So I, I was so used to working to be seen that when I no longer wanted to be seen, and I'm still that way today, I don't want to be seen. Everyone wants to invade my space so they can say hello and be, I, it's weird and anyway um this video is long enough but I, I knew to share my weight loss story this is not something i have shared too much publicly i it was even featured on a show a long time ago on discovery health called i lost it um so and it ran for like i'm gonna say 10 seasons so uh, a lot of people were aware of it, but this is years ago. And I will never forget, and this will be my parting thoughts. Um, it was my aunt and my mom in the car. My mom drove to Atlanta Medical Center. And we had um, um, When You Believe by Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey from the Prince of Egypt soundtrack on repeats. And to this day, the lyrics make me cry um, because when I think of where I was in that moment and where I am now physically, that was nothing but a miracle. So when I'm in my moments right now where life seems, like I said, I'm in survival mode. And life seems like I don't I don't understand why I'm going through this or what is going. I, I remember those times. And I remember that specific time back then when I I knew that I was gonna have the surgery, but I didn't have I didn't have health insurance, I didn't have money, I didn't have a job. And then it was just as if I just manifested it. Like within less than two months, everything was done. So there can be miracles when you believe the hope is frail. It's hard to kill. So Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Please, if you like these stories, if you want more, I'll definitely keep them more brief, but this is the longest one because it was um, about my weight loss journey. Um, please like, comment, please subscribe. Um, I'm very new to the channel. I really would love to make this bigger and build a community so I can hear your stories. How did you do it? And what are you going through? How can I help? 
Thanks for listening. Take care. Unscripted with Daphne.